like to call to order the Virginia West Virginia City Council for the date of October 16th, 2018. Uh, please take a moment of silence with me. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. First item on the agenda, consider acceptance of resignation from Councilman Jay Douglas Fleener, staff report. Uh, Council, on October the 3rd, uh, the city provided uh, Mr. Fleener with notice that the city intended to uh, move ahead with his removal hearing on the night of Monday, October the 15th. And yesterday afternoon at 3 p.m., approximately 3 p.m., I received via email through his attorney a resignation letter that he was resigning effective at, as of 5.55 p.m. on October the 15th. Uh, due to the meeting being a called meeting last night, we were unable to accept his resignation at that time, and that's the purpose of today's called meeting. All right. Any council <coughs> discussion or comments? Well, uh, <clears throat> I would just say that uh, it's, you know, very unfortunate. Uh, Mr. Plinger wasn't here last night to uh, I know he's talked to the media and offered his side of things, but to come here and explain that to us. I will say that um, from, from my point of view, I think the rest of the council will agree, there was nothing in uh, the charges that had to do with anything that Mr. Fleener uh, said in here or the way that he acted in here. I know that in a lot of people's minds, they thought it was some kind of retribution for that, but it had nothing to do with that while I may not have agreed and on many times didn't agree with things Mr. Flinder did and definitely with the way he presented it or said it, uh, this was had nothing to do with that at all. And uh, just wanted to make that clear. The only thing I'll say, I think the city uh, is uh, taking the appropriate action uh, for what we had presented to us. I think we did it appropriately. I think we gave it the very due diligence it needed. Um, it was a very confidential personnel issue. Um, that's why there was a lot of no comments. Um, in my opinion, that's the way you handle those things. Um, but I will agree with Mr. Hartley that uh, nothing that has transpired had anything to do with uh, Mr. Fleener's position on any topic of discussion. Uh, had everything to do with uh, what was in the documents that he was presented. And so uh, with that said, it's unfortunate we've got to this point, but uh, we've got to move the city along. And so um, the city will move forward and we will do our very best to uh, position the city and keep doing the business of the city. So that said, I need a council motion second for some <coughs> other discussion. Well, I will say one thing. <coughs> We have definitely seen as a city that our charter has to be tweaked on, on situations like this. And we need to work on this immediately because the public has the right to know everything. And the charter tied our hands through this whole entire process. And <clears throat> we need to fix that. All right, with that said, uh, looking for a council motion a second to accept the resignation of Councilman Fleener. I move that we accept Councilman Fleener's resignation. Okay, motion Mr. Osborne. Second. Second, Mr. Wingard, please call the roll. Hartley? Yes. Osborne? Yes. Wingard? Yes. Mumpower? Yes. All right, next item, discussion of timeline to appoint new council member. Uh, council, I've reviewed the calendar. It appears we have 30 days to appoint a new council member. Uh, during this time period, we'll have uh, two uh, regular meetings, and we, I would hope that we could have someone appointed by the November 13th meeting in order for them to be on board for some important business that we have coming up at no on November 13th. So after reviewing my calendar, uh, I would propose these dates to Council as a timeline to accept applications and interview candidates and appoint a new Council member. 
Uh, tomorrow evening by 5 p.m. we'll have applications available online for individuals to fill out in order to um, place their name in the hat to be uh, the next council member. Uh, the 26th of October applications would be due by 5 p.m. On October the 30th, which I believe is a Tuesday, uh, council will have a, um, a called meeting to interview candidates in public. And then on November 1st, there would be a closed session for personnel matters, and that is a Thursday. And then on the 6th of November, council will appoint a new uh, council member at that time, and the time is yet to be determined. Okay, so go through those one more time. I got sure. the 17th, the council applications uh, will be available online. That's correct, by 20, 5 p.m. By 5 p.m. The 26th applications will be due back to City Hall by close of business. That's correct. The 30th will be the interview meeting here in Council Chambers, the yes. meeting. And the was the first? First is a closed session okay. for uh, Council to discuss personnel matters. Okay. And then 6 was the day for final interviews and selection. Uh, you, the, on the 6th, Council would appoint a new Council member on the 6th. So we would have done our final interviews on the first and closed session, is that yeah. correct? I, I'd leave that up to council if you all make the choice on the first or when you decide to make that choice, but I would propose that we have someone appointed by the sixth. Uh, that would give me time to at least orient uh, the new council member on upcoming matters and get them um, information in regards to the city so that they can be informed by the November 13th meeting. If we. Uh Kind of follow the procedure we did last time when Councilman Steele resigned. Then the, the six will we'll probably meet to try to narrow that field. I, it's hard to tell how many applications you get, but I know last time I think we had 11, and we narrowed it down to two. And then uh, the night we made the appointment, we we went in closed session, had in-depth interviews with those everybody else that first. What would here be the 30th was um, an open meeting where everybody answered the same set of questions. So I, I, I think that format worked particularly well. Uh, I know Mr. Mumpower is here. I know Mr. Wingard went through it. So, uh, you know, if you see any issues with the uh, election day, the 6th, uh, any, we're going to do it in these chambers or we're going to move it to another uh, area? I think if the 6th, if you all need to do a closed session, I wouldn't see any issues because closed session would occur upstairs in the conference room. Um, the only issue I would foresee is, um, and, he, and I really wouldn't even foresee that as an issue because we could always have the meeting upstairs as well or downstairs in the conference room and open it to the public and we could appoint someone at that time and have them sworn in at that time as well. Does anybody have any problem with the dates? Um. I assume the time, all this, 6 o'clock? Uh, the only, uh, I think we need to look, everything, the seventh, the 30th and the 1st would be at 6. Um, and on the 6th, we could do 6 o'clock. But since it's election day, I didn't know if y'all would want to maybe do it at noon because I wouldn't anticipate it taking an extreme amount of time. You could do it at noon quickly. And I could have the circuit court clerk here to swear someone in at that well, time. But if we interview people, that could take a while. I was anticipating the first would be the closed session for the interviews. Well, I think we'd, we'd need to narrow it down before we interviewed them. Okay. I mean, that just, it, it, again, a part of it would depend on the number of people, but if you have 10, uh, well, I've used last time as an example, 11 people, you'd want to talk about, you know, who do you, who rises to the top and bring those back? Or at least that's what we did last time. It seemed, that, to, it seemed to work. You're all, I mean, you're all's call. We can do another closed session on the six. That's fine. At six. What time is the polls close? Seven. Seven. When we when we move it to seven. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so I'm good with everything now. 6 p.m. and 7 p.m. on the 6th. My dates are open. Okay, let me, <clears throat> on the 6th, 
can we go ahead and schedule a closed session and then come back and appoint because that's what happened the last time yeah that's yes we can do that we can put that on so the, the sixth will be closed and then we'll come back and appoint right Okay. The first item of business will be closed session. Second item of business will be the appointment of a new council member. And that's going to be at 7 p.m.? Yes. 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. I'm good with all that. Bill's checking his calendar. Oh, yeah. No, I was putting it in the calendar. Oh, it's it, it's, so you're good with it. I'm good with it. I'm just making yeah, sure it's in there so I don't. I'm good with it. Okay, so everybody, it seems like everybody's good with those dates and times. So okay. go ahead and uh, type that up and get it out. Yeah, we'll put the proper notices out and uh, have applications available by tomorrow evening at 5. All right, so the process uh, will go very similar, if not identical, to uh, when we appointed someone to replace Mr. Steele, which uh, we'll have the applications out there. Anybody that's interested, uh, I would suggest that anybody in the city that wants to continue to help us move forward apply, and then we'll have open questions uh, here in chambers so each candidate can have a chance at the podium to answer uh, their questions and uh, or our questions and then um, council will take the time to take that list whittle it down to the few that we really want to talk to in a lot of detail and then we'll make that selection and uh, seat that council person and uh, move forward so with that said any other points of discussion okay all right with that we adjourn